Hello everyone, this is Lean and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm really glad that you're joining me because today I'm creating this happy mailbox card using some of my favorite things products. I'm featuring this Sunshine Friends stamp set and I actually took quite a lot of these images out of this stamp set. Um, I don't know if you recall, uh, but I recently, well, last month and the month before I think, I made some outside the box cards and one was really simple, another one was for the Asma Hop where I did a lot of ink blending and today I am combining images and ink blending to really create a scene card in this box, which is a really fun thing to do. However, I most of the time make clean and simple cards so I don't necessarily grab a lot towards that outside the box card uh, die um, but I do do love it uh, and I really enjoyed creating this card um, so I'm glad to share it today with you it has been made uh, well a while back actually um, I also gave it to my father for his birthday and that was uh, halfway May so um, this card exists quite a lot of uh, time already uh, but I just didn't got to creating this video um, and whenever I share something with you I want to have that blog post ready, the video, the social media uh, so therefore it took me a bit longer to share it here but I'm glad that I'm finally doing that today. So I did some copy coloring, I stamped the images out on Transotype Perfect Coloring Paper. Um, if by any means you are curious to supplies later on, there is always a list in the description box as well as on my blog post. So if you recall vaguely what I said here and you want to revisit um, exactly the products that I used, then there is always that list to help you. Um, the same for the Copic markers. Those combinations you can always find on my blog post and I'm trying to list them every time for each um, element of my coloring. So for example the bear or the tree or um, well the yellow later on etc. So I just did my coloring as always. I'm going from darkest to lightest. Many ways to color with alcohol markers or with other mediums. Everyone has sort of his or her own way of tackling coloring. For me it's going from darkest to lightest. But if you color in another uh, way or in another order, just keep doing you. Just enjoy the process. Um, that's what it's all about. Uh, but in case you were wondering, I prefer coloring from darkest to lightest. I also think um, if you're new to coloring that it is handy to try a bit both um, or the several uh, options that you have uh, on how to color or in which order. Um, I know that in the beginning I was like, well, I will just keep um, using all of the different options and just be handy dandy this way and um, one day I did the coloring from darkest to lightest on my videos the other day uh, other days I did the reverse uh, but then all at a sudden moment um, I I just stopped doing that and I stuck to going from darkest to lightest and didn't change ever since so you do you um, this is just what works for me the best I also, whenever I do scene cards, as I'm mostly used to creating clean and simple, for me a way to still keep it somehow clean and simple, although I'm creating a scene card, is to reuse combinations. So that's what you're seeing here, the duck and the bees, but also the greenery that you will see is all with the same combinations. Um, that's for me easy. Um, I don't have to grab a zillion markers. On the other side, uh, when you want to combine lots of images, it's always handy if you have some, uh, some colors that return because they work together, they are the same. Uh, so therefore, for me, it helps to get my card design working um, in any way. Of course, you can create a rainbow card and go really bright and have tons and tons of colors that's gorgeous as well. But for me, I mostly stick to reusing colors wherever I can. 
I'm also using purple today, which is a really gorgeous color. I don't like uh, the family necessarily to blend, uh, but I went for a really soft purple today that I already used on other cards as well. Sometimes a combination just works and you can uh, try and reinvent combinations. Um, also something that I tried doing in the beginning to really kind of learn which combination I prefer over which um, and so therefore it's handy to sometimes try to step outside of that comfort zone and to just try something new but you don't have to because there are so many combos out there and I think there are many not even considered as a combo that will be gorgeous uh, but once you you have a few combinations that you love like I have with the earth tones um, I tend to stick to them because I know they work and that's what it's all about. So here again, working my way from darkest to lightest, uh, purples aren't the easiest, personal opinion of course, uh, to blend, uh, but these are really really soft ones and so it kind of worked out quite easily. Um, but there are just some color families that are really really hard to blend in my opinion. Uh, purples are one of them and I think I also struggle with like the RVs. Uh, quite a lot. I don't have a lot of them uh, currently which can also uh, be one of the reasons because I am just missing a few uh, really necessary markers but I most of the time use reds or um, all those other colors. Uh, so therefore again using the, those same greens uh, for uh, the grass, for the tree and then I just made sure to cover the complete tree here with greens. I had no clue how to start on this uh, but it worked out in the end so that's the most important thing. And that's how all of these images came together. So really fresh card that I'm making today. Um, I think that is a lot of fun. Um, I remember my first outside the box card I used pattern papers and it was like with another stamp set from Stacey Kula um, with the magician magicians. <laughs> wow. Um, and I really love that. Um, I must admit when you create more and more scenes and you get more confident with it. Uh, I must admit this one is truly my favorite of all the outside the box cards I made so far. So I just use my markers which is something that I love coloring with. And then the distress, distress inks later on for ink blending, which is the ink that I use all the time for ink blending. So I really combined my comfort zones all together and stepped at the same time a bit outside of it by creating a really scene card, um, outside the box card. So to add a bit of interest to the tree, I tried to add some dots. Um, it's not that visible. For me, it helped me, but um, I can understand if you're like, what you doing that isn't adding anything? You do you. Okay, so next I took the outside the box level up, the outside the box low profile add-on. Um, I also took the cloudy with a chance of rain um, die set to help me with my scenery. Next I had these inserts where we are going to create a bit of a 3D effect uh, but I wanted to have some grassy borders so I just traced the width of these um, inserts and then I'm going to use some how is it called grassy hillside borders from Lonfon and I'm going to trim a few out of this paper. I have it size wise perfectly uh, to go later on top of these inserts and um, I can just do some ink blending immediately on these grassy borders. So once I cut out three of them um, it was time to sort of get everything in place, start ink blending. So I had to clean up my desk uh, to give me a bit more space um, to wiggle around and have that ink blending going on. So I took my, um, this is the media mat, mat, mat um, from Waffle Flowers. I'm of course using my favorite distress ink for a sky, cracked pistachio, a really fresh 
color as are the colors that I use for my images um, and then I will use Twisted Citron as the green color um, for the greenery etc but also uh, for the outside of the box I wanted to sort of have that green fading into the white area to have everything sort of matching with the scene that I was going to create. But I'm not completely covering it, just having a bit of a transition from that green towards the white. I will also do the same on the grassy borders. Really soft, really bright, fun, fresh colors. So here I did the ink blending. I sped it up, of course, but I was making sure to also just keep in mind that these grassy hillsides are really delicate. Um, so um, it might look like I'm going really roughly here, but it took me a bit of time. And just making sure that I have the same fade out into the white. Now whenever I'm creating box cards, I tend to go over all of the creases on my scoreboard um, just to help me. Um, because it is already creased by the dye, uh, but I truly find it helpful to just crease it a bit more um, and then uh, bend everything over. Another thing that I tend to do when I'm creating box cards is to use score tape. It's a tape that is really, really strong. So make sure you add it immediately straight where you want it to be. Uh, but also because it is this strong, I love using it for a box card. Um, I think that's really useful. Liquid glue would have, well, it would need a bit of time to dry. So that isn't really handy in this case for me. Um, and then there are many ways to uh, assemble a box card. Um, so everyone has his or her own uh, way of creating. Normally I tend to leave my box open, add everything inside and then I fold everything close at once. Uh, so there are many ways and the other videos that I created with this outside the box die um, all have another way of assembling. Um, but in this case, I don't know, I needed just to make sure that my grassy borders were going to be visible all. Um, and therefore I just, I just had to fiddle a bit more, um, than I would usually do. Uh, but it worked out in the end. Um, also not every grassy border was completely all the way down as the inserts. Uh, no worries about that. You will not see it since it's going to be three-dimensional, uh, one uh, after the other one. So that is going to be just fine. Here I'm just using some liquid glue. It also gave me some wiggle room uh, to really place it as I wanted it to be. Uh, and then I just had a tiny sliver uh, to trim off, making sure that I wasn't trimming off the uh, little tabs that we need to adhere them in the box. So, let the fiddling begin. Um, <laughs> Since I already closed that um, box kind of idea, I just had to wiggle these, well, these inserts in that closed circuit that I already had here. So I'm just folding those tabs inwards, then I'm placing it and then I'm folding them open again and making sure that I'm pressing them really well. This way I'm also trying to have them straight. Now if it wouldn't be completely straight it's not a big deal because in the end you will see one layer after the other one and it will be a lot of fun to, to get a card like this. Next I was going to adhere this big panel but I trimmed it down, well I die cut it twice. Uh, one for the ink blending and another one to just have on the back to not have anything shown. So that's why I'm covering this completely. And you will see when I remove all of the backings, I will also make sure that I am aligning that second panel completely straight right against this one um, so that it will completely cover maybe some ink that was on the back here and nobody will see. I also just prefer not showing the box and how it is assembled to the one that is receiving it. So therefore removing here the backings again and then I'm just placing that other panel right against it. And once I press it down I have the perfect um, 
backing and um, if you want to add a sentiment you can write directly on there but I always like had a smaller uh, panel I write on there and then I adhere that panel once it's written and signed by everyone I am adhering that uh, on my box card so now that everything is ready I am just making sure that I am including as much images as possible on this box card I I colored quite a lot and um, normally I would go for less so I just made sure to have enough and if I would have have used everything that was just fine uh, but I truly try to include all of the images colored today if not I would have added them on the back of my stamp set just maybe in case I needed it for another card while I was placing the clouds, um, I made sure to also overhang a few, so I just had to trim that off. And here you can see the gorgeous panel that is covering all of our pieces of this box. It's just completely wide, clean, neat. I love it like that. And then I'm of course adding all of the rest of the images. For the beads, um, if you want to have some elements floating, you can always use some acetate and just trim down a strip. I will use that for one of the beads. Um, another thing that you can do if you want something floating in the back of your box, you can also fold things uh, five times and then, well, it's hard to explain, but if you want to have another option to let your things float, uh, then I would suggest you're looking at the other box card that I created with the magician. Yes, pronunciation. <laughs> um, I would suggest you look there uh, because there I did something with one of the birds uh, to show you another option. So uh, that can be handy in any case. But here, since I wanted this one floating in the front of my box, I just used a strip of acetate, as you can see. But it looks like there is nothing since it's see-through, so that's really handy. Now for the sentiment, I just trimmed down one of the rectangles that is also in this die. And then I took the gorgeous stamp set that is called Stylish Sentiments. The script is gorgeous. There are a few die cuts as well in this script. I got one, I haven't used it yet. It's a shame because this is so beautiful. It's simple, but it's extremely elegant if you ask me and the sentiments are wonderful in this stamp set called stylish sentiments now i'm going to add this in the front and i was really happy to add the um, grassy uh, items that i created next to the sentiment it sort of includes everything um, and i really really love that i added a few elements extra to my card so as you can see my box card here is finished it is a scene on its own and it was really really a lot of fun to create i hope that you enjoyed the process and of course that you like the end result as promised another box card um i truly enjoyed it and um i want to thank you all for being here i truly truly appreciate it i want to wish you all an incredible day and i'll be back soon bye